Hey, Brian. Hi. How's it going? Oh, nice great. to meet you. Who we got here? This is Grayson. Hi, Grayson. Why did you want to do a biography on Jim Henson? Well, first it was just a shock to me he hadn't been done, first of all. That's one of the, you know, first, first rules is what's a book you would love to read? And, uh, and I would love to read about Jim Henson, and there hadn't been, I was looking for a book on Jim Henson, and there hadn't been one done. But also, I'm kind of the perfect generation for that, because I'm, I was two when Sesame Street debuted, and I was nine when The Muppet Show came on. So I was sort of the perfect Henson age kid. And, uh, and so even as a, as a kid, I knew that The Muppets didn't move themselves. I knew there were people doing this. And I had read this book that I used to check out of the library called uh, Of Muppets and Men. It was all about the making of The Muppet Show. And I used to read that book constantly until it fell apart. So I knew all these backstories about Jim Henson and all the people that did it. So I, so I was always really intrigued by Jim anyway. But uh, the fact that there wasn't a biography was just, that was a real, that was a real plus in the sense that it was like, great, that's the book I want to read. So I'm, that's the book I'm going to write. You had to reach out and, and it took you quite some time to, to break through and, and make that contact to actually get permission. Tell us a little bit about how that worked out. It really took a long time and it was hot and cold and it was yes, then it was no, then it was we're not sure. What I did was I went down to the Library of Congress and I pulled everything I could find on Jim when he was growing up in Hyattsville uh, in Maryland and was performing on on WTOP and WRC when he was 18, 19 years old, high school senior and a freshman in college. And he was already getting tons of press because he was really good and sent that into them. And that sort of pushed the door open. They, they said, okay, we see, you know, you're, you're not up to shenanigans here. We, we see how you would do this. We, we get it. And once that happened, um, you're sort of a made man at that point. They, you know, they let me uh, into their, their archives are privately held, which is the reason you really need their cooperation. They're not at the University of Maryland where he went to school. Um, they're privately owned in their company. And so you have to be in their offices when you're doing it. Um, but I did need their participation in order to really do this the right way. In writing this book, what did you find the most fascinating? Or what, what kind of things did you find out that really um, surprised you? This is a guy who, when he was just starting out, um, was offered an awful lot of money to own one of his characters already. He'd, just, he'd made uh, Rolf the dog for a dog food commercial. I like Purina dog chow and Purina offered to buy that character outright from him. And his agent was even saying, Jim, this is a great deal, it's $150,000, you've got to take this. And Jim told his agent, again, this is a time when he's in his early 20s, he said, you know, Bernie, never sell anything that I own. Just knew intuitively that his work had value. Did you ever dream that it would be such a success? It was on the New York Times bestseller list and it made CNN's top 10 mm -hmm. viewers readers list. I mean, you've really done well. What's really neat is just, you know, I, I get emails from people who say, you know, I never knew about Jim. Thank you for bringing Jim to us. And even people who knew Jim will, will write to me and say, you know, you really got him and, you know, this is really important. Really. So that's, that's the most gratifying thing is when you hear from people who knew Jim and think that, you know, that the book captured him. You know, people tell you when, when he died and they had the, the, the memorial source, I cried that entire chapter. That's why I actually really like to hear that. The Daily Show, an interview with Jon Stewart. How did that happen? It comes about completely by surprise because everybody who writes a book wants to be on The Daily Show. So I'd been talking with my editor and I sort of jokingly said something about, so, you know, when are we doing The Daily Show? Ha, 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 ha. And he, and he said, well, um, they actually haven't told us no. Jim Henson, the biography. When we found out, it was very quick. You know, it's like they, once they said they wanted it, and I'm, guess, I'm guessing Random House pitched this. It was, I think, 10 days later. Like, it was no time at all. You know, you're sitting in the back room watching it on TV, and then the producer comes to get you, and they walk you down these, you know, increasingly dark and winding halls. And she's talking with me, saying, John's going to introduce you, and you'll come out. And all I'm thinking is, I'm going to miss that step <laughs> as I go out there. So when you watch the video, it kind of see me storm out there. Brian J. Jones. So we're in a hurry because I, I was afraid I was going to miss my cue when I got out there. But it took me a little bit to figure out that he wasn't actually going to ask a question, that he's just kind of talking. And so, you know, again, if you watch it, you'll see me. He says something and I, and I brilliantly go, yeah. 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 And, uh, and he starts talking again, and finally in my head, I thought, you got to go, man. You got to go. And so the next thing when he said about the Muppets, you know, and the, and the Muppet Show pilot, then I finally went. Yeah. Uh, but it took me a little bit. I thought you did really well. Oh, I thought you. you did. You made him laugh. I mean, you made him laugh well, a couple good. of times, you know? I thought that was good. <laughs> Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Sidney Katz, and we're this is the second town hall meeting. So, with politics, you work with probably the you know Jim Henson's a pretty popular guy. You got Sid Katz that you're working for. He's probably one of the most popular guys in Montgomery County. Talk a little bit about working in that office. Yeah. Well, I've been really lucky throughout my career, both in politics and writing, that I've always worked with nice guys. 
Uh, I've written about nice guys, and I've always worked with really good guys. And so that's one of the great things about working for Councilmember Katz. He's a genuinely nice human being. Really uh, is great at what he does. He's been doing it so long that it actually looks really easy, and it's really hard. Uh, and he's one of these guys that's not afraid to pick up the phone and call people. He doesn't care if they're mad. Uh, he knows everybody. You take him to a meeting and you've got to spend at least 10 minutes of every meeting with him going through everybody. I knew your father. I knew your grandmother. I knew your great uncle. He knows everybody and he knows their stories. I have a New York Times best-selling author write our newsletter. You tell me who else can do that. He's really given us a, a great amount of fun to know that you have someone on staff that's an expert on Jim Henson. And as you can see, Kermit is on my desk right now. The Muppets were hugely popular here in the D.C. area. They got a ton of ink, tons of press. Jim won a local Emmy at age 20. He's a great speaker. In fact, the, the uh, Montgomery County Council, he actually spoke during a lunch hour and people brought their, literally brought their lunch to, and, and munched as they were listening to, to Brian talk about Jim Henson. You certainly didn't know Jim Henson until you heard it through Brian J. Jones. And, and that was a lot of fun. It really was. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I know, I know everybody has to get back to work, so I'll let everybody get back to work. What is it about being a biographer that, that um, inspires you? Yeah. You know, actually, working in policy is actually great practice for biography. I mean, I've done policy my entire career, and since I, 1990, since I got out of college, I've worked at the federal level and state lawmakers and local lawmakers. And you're, the big part of your job is to take a lot of information and compress it down into one page to brief your member. And that's essentially what you do in biographies. You take a whole lot of information and you try to compress it down and tell your story uh, to your reader as quickly as you can and, and as interestingly as you can in a way that they can help them make an informed decision as well. So this is where the magic happens, <laughs> where all your writing this takes place. Right. And wow, look at all. All this on the whiteboard. This is about about your Lucas biography. Yeah, this is just this is just one year, and this is going to be an entire chapter. Wow. You know, you're working on a biography right now on George Lucas, and um, George Lucas worked with Jim Henson, and George Lucas, um, his staff reached out to Jim Henson in the creation of Yoda. Right. So they're sort of tied together. Is that why you're looking at writing this book about George Lucas? So one of the really fun things when you're writing Jim's story is here I'm, you know, I'm writing along and here comes George Lucas and he wants to build Yoda and I'm like, wow, I'm playing with like all these iconic figures here and, and here I get to mention Yoda and talk about the development of Yoda. So that was one of the things that really, you know, really, when I thought, well, geez, when I get done with this, George Lucas would be a great project to do next. How yeah. long does it take to write a chapter? You know, if I can do a chapter in two to three weeks, I'm pretty good. So it should be 10,000 words per chapter, but as you can see, I'm not even close to that on my word count. I'm 11,900 in chapter one, 18,500 in chapter two, 16, two, so. <laughs> Anyway, it's not, uh, it's not working out very well right yeah, now. Yeah, that's and, why you, you have an editor, correct? Right. You sit down, you're like, oh, good. I get to write, you know, Star Wars. I'm going to get to write Empire Strikes Back. Oh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. There's always something going on. And, and I can watch Star Wars and call it work, which is nice. I could do that with, you know, Sesame Street and call that work. So that was <laughs> nice, too. It's great. Yeah. <laughs>